Fall excitement has begun at Geauga Park District with something for everyone in 25 parks close to home. Trails, ponds, programs, facilities, and so much more to bring color to your day. Plan your next family adventure now at geaugaparkdistrict.org. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, wanted to uh, you know, welcome everybody here. We didn't know what kind of a crowd we were going to get, so we figured we'd plan for Building 8 just to be sure. Um, we would have uh, space to accommodate everybody. So what I'd like to do is, is, is um, go ahead and uh, start out. Let's see here. Um, so basically, the uh, the reason for this meeting tonight, um, you know, ever since the you know newspapers have published information regarding this contract, um, you know, we have gotten an overwhelming response of telephone calls, questions. Um, personally, I'm in a, uh, you know, in a uh, public exposure at our, at, at my, uh, my other job other than the commissioner's office that I just have a lot of people that have confronted me, you know, pretty much put me to the task of saying, you know, how is this how is this that this can happen under your watch and the county's watch and the other commissioners? So um, we, you know, this has been a big concern, and, and for me, it's a little bit of a concern also because I'm basically reliving what happened back in 2014, where this same type of scenario happened then, where you know it was a pay increase of approximately. 100 and I believe the salary had gone to 153,000 and um, you know that was another situation where basically um, public's public went crazy with it we had news teams coming to the commissioner's office um, just a lot of public outcry with this that then got back to the board the board I got to applaud them they did the right thing and the the contract I believe was rescinded or changed and the salary came back to a reasonable salary and things things had changed um, so here we are in uh, you know 2019 and once again you know we've got a situation like this so you know the commissioners have a have a responsibility to the taxpayers and people look to us about spending and when there's a situation like this we're the ones that get the calls and I don't have a problem with that if there's a, a way that I could articulate and express and explain to the taxpayer to justify this but if I don't have that ability to do that I'm not going to sit there and lie to a taxpayer and just say this is just the way it is and this is I'm not going to say anything so um, and, and, and with that being said, you know, as far as uh, the county commissioners, I'm speaking for myself, but Tim Lennon, Jim Dvorak, same thing. I mean, we want to maintain complete transparency in, in our everyday operation. We've been here approximately eight years, and this is what we have done. And we, we're, we're not going to hide behind a situation. <clears throat> if we make a bad decision, we'll face a bad decision. If we make a good decision, we'll tell you that too. But if we see a situation that also needs to be brought up to, to, to people's interest and attention, we'll do that. So with that, I'll move on. So, so, um, so basically, just to kind of uh, give a, a, a brief overview with the Geauga County Mental Health Board, at a glance is uh, constitute a local planning and funding authority. They're responsible for the distribution of funds and administration of public mental health, alcohol and drug addiction services in Geauga County. The board is responsible to develop, promote, and monitor services, facil facilities, and programs that are responsive to the behavioral health care needs of citizens of Geauga County. This information, as you'll see the disclaimer on the bottom, was taken off of basically the Geauga County Mental Health Board's website of what they're of what they do. Some of the agencies that are funded by mental health you'll see above: Catholic Charities, Family Pride, John Murray, 
Lake Geauga Recovery Centers, NAMI, Ravenwood, Torchlight, Women's Safe. And in a number of these organizations, mental health is not the only one that funds, that, that it gives funds to these because the commissioners through other means also, through our jobs and family services and, and, and different avenues that we have, we deal with them, they receive additional funds from, from the commissioners in, in, through these other departments also. So one of the things that's unique with the mental health health department is it's, it's, it's a department that is primarily a pass-through organization where funds, there's a, you know, here's, here's the, the, the dollars that they're given, and then they make the determination on where those dollars go for the different services through the, these agencies. And I would imagine um, Jim Adams actually, there's probably other ones other than this, correct? But, you know, these are some of the main ones, and these also I was able to get off of their website knowing myself of, of some of these that we do fund. So I guess in, 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 to make it simple, you know, if you've got a situation that there is a need for mental health, it's not that you're going to the mental health, you know, office and getting the treatment there. They're referring you to go someplace, or they're referring you to an agency, they're referring you to do, you know, the, the, the help that you could use or need. That's pretty much, you know, the way that that is, is set up. We, um, when this whole thing took place, um, we, we sent out a survey to 88, all 88 counties in Ohio. Um, out of the 88 counties, 51 of the counties responded. There were a couple of, a couple of specific things that we, 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 pieces of information that we got. Um, we wanted to know their population in their county because that's important. We wanted to know what their, um, you know, what, what their operating budget was for their county. Uh, or their operating budget for the mental health in their county. We asked them how many employees they had, and we also asked them what the director's compensation was. And in addition to that, then we also did a calculation of what the director's uh, compensation, based on a per capita basis, was that we could then accumulate those numbers to come up with a, with a number. So what we found is, is out of those 51 counties, we took... The, the every county that surrounds us. So we took Cuyahoga Lake, Trumbull, Portage, Ashtabula, and Geauga. Cuyahoga obviously having the largest population, over a million and two. Lake County with 230,000. Trumbull with 210. Portage 161. Ashtabula with 101. Geauga 93,000. So we are basically at the bottom on, on the population size. Taking it to the next figure, the, this is the budget. This is, and the budget for mental health is comes in through, through levy dollars. You know, there's a levy coming up, I believe, uh, in four or five weeks from now. Those those levies are how the mental health board obtains the funds to put into the into the different programs that they do. So that annual system budget right there are dollars that are coming in through those through those levies. So if you look at this, there's, there's the breakdown. I don't want to repeat it, all of these over again, but you could see, you know, Cuyahoga County, 14 times the size of Geauga County, is basically, you know, $63 million. Lake County, you know, almost three, three and a half times, you know, three and a half times the size of, of the budget that we have. Um, you know, Trumbull, Portage, and then Ashtabula is right on the bottom. Which Ashtabula actually was a little bit of a surprise because of the fact of the geographical size of Ashtabula but being the largest county in the state but, and, and having the population, but I think that the tax base in Geauga County is that much smaller also, so in turn they've got a little bit of a smaller budget there. So as far as supervised employee comparisons here, Cuyahoga 49. Lake County 9, Trumbull 9, Ashtabula 4, Portage 4, Jug I put 3 and 4. So I believe that currently we have three employees working for mental health, but there, there's, there has been a, a, a fourth employee, and I believe they're looking to get a fourth employee re returned back to what, it, what, this, uh, stand, what their uh, you know, standard was of, of actual employee count. So 
I'm currently three, looking at four. So now we basically go to the, um, the, the salary comparison. And if you go back to this slide, once again, on the supervised comparison, basically job is paired with the bottom, at the bottom with three currently, but just so you can see where the highlight is, is, is where it ranks. So now we basically take, take a, a current salary based on this current contract that came out. Cuyahoga with a 69 or $63 million budget, 49 employees is at 151,000. Lake County, more than double the people, almost three, three and a half times the size of our budget, has, a, has approximately a $18,000 above us. But then here's Geauga at 117,000. When you look at the counties below us and you look at the budget below us, we're seven, you know, climbing almost 17,000 ahead of them and probably close to uh, 22,000 ahead of uh, Trumbull County. With both of those locations having budgets that were increased more than us, employees that were increased more than us, and populations that were one more than double and, and one about one and one half the size of us. This was something that was this was something that was definitely concerning for for myself and I know the other commissioners. When you look at this on a per capita basis, you take Cuyahoga County, obviously a very populated county, but look over to the right. What it's costing Cuyahoga County per capita is 11 cents. Trumbull's 45, Lake is 59, Portage 61, Astabula 83. Geauga $1.25 per capita, per, per person, per population of what we've got in this county. And if you start to, to, to look at these numbers, I mean, put a percentage. I didn't want to go that far to start to create a confusion on this, but if we were to build in an actual percentage on this, it could, it, you, would, you would really see a, a staggering jump in, in, that, in that figure. So basically to summarize the last slides that I just showed you. So Geauga County, out of the, out of the counties that we, that we looked at there, we have the smallest population. We've got the least number of employees. We, we're holding the third largest director salary. And we've got the largest cost per capita to the taxpayer. Not to mention that this, this, this contract, and I want this my goal here is not to um, my goal here is to build awareness my goal is is not to to try to bring discredit to the board to the department to the director but rather to polarize what exactly is the situation here and 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 this is this this hundred and seventeen thousand is really not the number of what it of what this contract of five years is going to bring but rather you take that 117 and add another 20,000 to it to bring it to 137,000. So that's a big concern that we have is, is that we don't even know where this levy is going to go this year. We don't know where funding is going to be for the future, but we make a commitment to this kind of a salary to go into the future. What I'm going to do at this point in time, I'm going to pass this over to Jerry Morgan. He's our county administrator, and I can have him go through some of the um, the contractual stuff that's uh, involved in this. Thank you. So what we have is we have a contract that was recently approved by the Board of Mental Health for the executive director, and there is a number of concerns that with with this new contract. When it, in comparison to your, the, the standard county employees. Uh, begin with, uh, first of all, it's a contract and you're, you know, it's government employees, you know, we're not, we're not contractual. I'm, I'm county administrator, I don't have a contract. Commissioners can fire me tomorrow if they wanted to, for no, for no reason. They could say, we're done with you, we want to put somebody else in there. I can be gone tomorrow. So I don't have a contract. And very few, there's, uh, I think, to, to my knowledge, there's only two other individuals in the county who are uh, have contracts, and neither one of those are on boards that are appointed 
or with members that are appointed by the commissioners. So one of the, one of the things with this is it's a guaranteed five thousand five hundred eighty six dollar increase each year for the five years of the contract. That's at, at no no less than four point seven four point one five percent increase um, in the last ten years. The, the highest increase any county employee has gotten as far as base base salary is three um, percent. There is a number of years where that was zero, so it's you know, this, that's a beginning issue. Um, so the other thing is, except for the union contracts, it's the uh, water resources and the sheriff's office. No contract, no con. Except for the union contract, nobody is guaranteed a raise each year. So it's you know it's a unique unique deal. Even the contracts, those who do have contracts, they don't have multiple year increases included in their contracts. They have to come back each year and get their get their raise, get a new raise, if they get one at all. Um, Mr. Adams, we provided a vehicle that's not only for his county work related, but it also can be used for personal. And that will include also all of the uh, maintenance and fuel that's put into that vehicle. Uh, county county employees, no county employees permitted to use a county vehicle for his personal, his or her personal use. Uh, he's get, be given, being given a personal benefit of a two hundred fifty thousand dollar life insurance policy that's being paid for uh, by the board through the with the funds that come from your tax dollars and from state and federal grants. Uh, the county does provide to, to all their employees a fifty thousand dollar policy as kind of a little bit of a fringe benefit. For, the, for their for their benefit, um, it, Mr. Adams is being given a 60-day payout of accrued sick time upon separation from employment. That's not him retiring and, and going into retirement. That's actually just him leaving the county. County employees would not get any sick time payout unless they actually retired. And at that, the maximum they could get it, it, it's paid out at a 25 percent of whatever their sick time is, up to a maximum of 30 days. So they have to actually have 120 <coughs> days worth of sick time in order to get 30. So that's you know that's not just I'm leaving and I happen to have 30. I'm going to get 30. If they had 30, they're getting 12 and a half or 15, or 12, 10 to 12 days there paid out. Uh, he's being provided with professional liability insurance with coverage of two million dollars per occurrence and four million dollars total, which based on the way the contract is written, it does not. It's not only for his work for the Board of Health, it's, it's a personal professional liability insurance. There's, you know, employees that work for the county are covered by liability insurance, but that is for their work for the county. Uh, and then the, the final item, of, you know, one of the items of concern is that, that after this five-year term is done, Mr. Adams is guaranteed to remain an employee of the Board of Mental Health regardless of whether he gets a new contract or not. So those are kind of the, the general major issues that are with this, with the uh, contract that he's been provided. This, uh, this chart just kind of shows what the, the actual costs are. There's a salary that's being provided, but with the fringe benefits, as well as the other, uh, the, the other costs of employment, um, right now is for 2019, his salary is going to be $117,329. When you add in all the other benefits that he's getting, the total, the estimated total cost of this con of this contract for 2019 is just under $163,000. That's what you know. That's what the total benefit he's, he's getting. One of the things I also want to point out is that with the Board of Mental Health, with the health benefits, the employees are. Are not charged for any portion of their health insurance. County employees, we pay. You know, it's a it's a good deal for us. Don't get me wrong, but we have to pay a portion of the health insurance. The ending, it's like I said, it's a five-year contract. The ending salary, according to the to the list that is in the contract, would be about one hundred thirty-nine thousand six hundred eighty dollars. After you add in all those fringe benefits, the total cost. Of that contract is just under one hundred eighty-nine thousand. That that's what's going to cost at the end in twenty twenty-three. So the first uh, slide here, what we've got 
Um, this is going to be all of our department heads, elected officials. The only thing that this does not include is our judicial branch of our county positions. On the left side, you will see there's um, uh, asterisks on a number of those those uh, different people. Like at the top, you'll see engineer, sheriff, auditor. If you see those, those are elected officials. Those those salaries are not are not uh, created by us by anyone, but they are statutorily in the Ohio Revised Code and set by law of what those are to to, to pay. As far as on the, the only one that I will bring to your attention is on the engineer, he has a $109,000 salary. However, the Ohio Revised Code has a salary of approximately $99,000. But what he did is, is, is he's also on our uh, uh, stormwater, um, he's, the, he's the county stormwater manager. Stormwater manager as, as a uh, professional engineer that that is that that and it's mandated in the Ohio Revised Code that we have to have somebody. He's also a professional engineer. It's right up his right right up his alley with the roads and all of the drainage and all that. So it would only make the smart decision to have him as that. So that gives him an additional I believe it's ten thousand almost exactly stipend. So, but on the side here you'll see the the number of employees. So you'll see that as of today, um, mental health has the highest uh, highest salary in the county. This here is going to show you, this slide is going to show you the actual budget. Who has the largest budget? And you can see mental health is ranking number six comparatively to the rest of the, the rest of the people that are 13, 13 million, 13 million, 14 million, 15 million, 26 million. This next chart is going to show you where the breakdown is with it, with with you know budget and people. So you can see it continues to go down towards the bottom of, of the amount of, of you know exposure responsibility for employees, operating budget, um, and what have you, and where that position ranks. So as we had talked before. This is, a, this is kind of a snapshot of what happened last year in 2014. As um, soon as the levy was passed, we had a scenario where all of a sudden there were people that, if you look at this, um, if you look at this figure um, right, right here, you have a $53, 1635 29 this was right after the levy was passed. Here's where the people ended up going with some fairly large increases. Now, mind you, we had gone the year pri years prior to this were tough years that the commissioners had gone through and said responsibly, we can't afford to give anybody pay raises for for the health of our county, for the health of our our organizations. This was prior to my. In 2012, I came in in December of 12, but in 13, um, that was my first year that I actually was in in the uh, in the in the commissioner's office of a full year, and I believe that year we raised we gave a two percent, and then since then it's always ranged between two and three percent is what we have been able to do. However, what what you'll see is. When you look at these salaries right here, this went from 34 to 42, 73 to 89, 61 to 77, 33 to, or to 41, with an average of 28% of increases. This, is, this, this definitely struck a nerve because responsibly the commissioners gave a moderate increase of 3%, but all of a sudden, Mental health makes up for all of those years that they did not have an increase. We wouldn't have been able to do it here because it would have pretty much put us upside down with, with all the employees that we have within our hiring authority. This department obviously took it upon itself to, listen, not, I'm not opposed to rewarding our employees and giving them what's due to them, but it comes to being fiscally responsible and doing the right thing. But how could we continue to have run a county if we would have done that same scenario, well, some th this was 
this was brought to the attention of the board. And once again, I applaud the board. I applaud Jim Adams. And the salary, salaries were brought back to a reasonable amount. And, and thank you also to the, to the media that was able to get this out there so people did have an opportunity to see this. And, 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 and it was brought back to a reasonable amount. Here we go again, 2019, we're coming into a levy, where are we gonna be? And I would rather get this out there now, especially with all the new board members that we have this year and moving forward, to, to give them this picture because I don't know if they're actually given that picture. And we don't wanna, the last thing that we wanna do is, is interfere in the business but the first thing we're going to do is look at responsibility and accountability. And, and this, my dad always told me, if you think it's wrong, it probably is. And when you look at something like this, it just feels wrong. So where we're basically at over here is this. This is, um, this is, this is the, um, uh, actually, Jerry, if you wanted to come and talk about this, I could, Jerry, Jerry actually had put this, uh, prepared this together and can give a little more background on this. this. This is just based off of the 2018 operational budget. Um, and this is just the Board of Mental Health and Recovery Services, their kind of, their general fund. There's some funds that are specifically designed that that to go certain places. So their revenue, based on 2018, the, the, the revenue that they brought in through property taxes, uh, grants and reimbursements, was just under five million six hundred thousand. Um, the, the distributed funds for contract services was about was just under four million four hundred thousand. They did have operational expenses of around six hundred seventy-five thousand. Uh, the 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 three listed there aren't all of their operational expenses, but they were kind of the biggest ones. Uh, building cost of operation was just under thirty-three thousand. Computers uh, were about forty thousand. But you know, as as is expected. The salary expenses were the, were the, were the largest, at just under, or just over 481,000, and that includes the salary and then all the fringe benefits that are associated with that. So basically, you know, when you look at that, they took in about 5.6 million. They actually distributed about 4.4 million debt to, to actually help and do what the uh, mental health levy is supposed to be doing. Okay, so in, in close, um, We've, we've recently appointed four, four new board members um, within the last 60 days um, in, in, with our hopes that we're going to have you know, more accountability um, within the department of just being able to sometimes ask the hard questions. Um, you know, our goal tonight is to assure proper spending. Our goal is not to, to try to influence the levy one way or another. We want the levy to pass because of the fact that we know that there are people out there that need the services. But it's just unfortunate this is always seems to be in the last two times that a situation like this comes up when the levy is at the, at the table. Um, we wanted to reach out to the board members to potentially reconsider their position with the terms of the renewal of the contract. And one of the things that, you know, and Jerry, if you want to speak on it, or I can, is that there is language within the bylaws and there is language within the Ohio Revised Code that clearly states how that board is supposed to do reviews and increases that the contract actually is, is, not, is, is not complying with what the Ohio Revised Code has spelled out in, in, the, in the law. I'm not an attorney and I don't claim to me, but I can tell you that just layman's reading of that, it makes it pretty clear that there's a problem. And you know, to the general public, you know, we, um, we, truly, um, we, we truly thank you for your dedication. You know, a number of you have, have you know, came out before and continue to, to come out. The amount of people that we've heard from on the phones, um, in person, um, it just just an overwhelming amount of response. So one one more thing that I want to try to cover here also because when I came into office eight years ago, um, I I came from actually the police world of things. I was a police officer 
for, for 19 years full time, then went into my own business, and I understood, you know, the public retirement system in the sense of how it was. And what I can tell you is that we were dealing, it, dealing with it on police and fire, and police and fire today is struggling because of it. PERS had the same thing going on, and it is a factor that we're struggling with, is the retire rehire. It is legal, and I will tell you right now, it is legal for somebody to retire and rehire them back. And we have, the, have had this scenario in our county still to today. We are going through a situation right now that we've learned that there's going to be one of our building inspectors that is, is looking to possibly retire next year. Try to hire a building inspector. It's virtually impossible because of the restrictions that the state of Ohio Building Board has to, to qualify what a building inspector is supposed to be. Well, what I can tell you is that is a situation where we will potentially look at a rehire situation if we cannot fill it because there's qualifications and need. But when we have a situation of a retire rehire, it has been not a written rule, but it has been a common practice that they come back with a minimum of approximately a 20% reduction in pay. So it gives us that savings and, and, and it gives us the experience and it gives us a certain amount of time with the end goal of basically putting a, you know, a, a succession plan in place that you basically bring somebody in with the understanding of training, finding that next person to bring up, getting the younger people from below that have are, are new and, and, and have the ambition to continue to carry the torch from, from down below to carry and pull them up. That is kind of the, that has been the goal of the retire rehire of what the commissioners have been doing. Not to basically bring somebody in like he basically bought a winning lottery ticket that night and now he's going to get his pension. Not to even mention that when we're paying 14% into the pension system, that employee still continues to pay 10% into that pension system. But guess what? That pension system doesn't stay in for all the other employees in the county. That 10% goes into an annuity. So that when that person retires from that retire rehire position, he's given another bonus of that 10% basically. So that money does not go to support the employees that are up and coming. And what it does is, is it weakens and weakens and weakens the system that right now, what is the pension system going through? They're going to be eliminating medical benefits. You know, they're police and fire. Our police officers that are retiring now are paying over $1,500 a month for medical benefits. You know, that have risked their lives every day on the road to make, this, to make us safe, have to leave now and pay it $1,500. I don't feel good about that. And, 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 I, and, and what, why is that happening? Because of irresponsible planning and irresponsible policies. And, and, and what we've got here is our director is retired and rehired. You know, are we following some type of a reduction in, in, in salary to accommodate that, you know, nobody has taken away his, his ability of having experience, knowledge, and everything else. But at the end of the day, where does this benefit sometimes the, the, the financial perspective of what we're going through? Where do you go to, to have a car and your taxpayers are paying for gas for you to go to, you know, CVS or go to the grocery store? You know, where do you get your personal life insurance paid for? Where do you get personal liability insurance paid for? These are things that we as commissioners, myself, this is way over the top. And it's, a, and, and, it's, and it's a situation that I am hoping, hoping that you guys give this some consideration. So to close, on behalf of the Geauga County Commissioners, I'd like to extend a special thank you to everyone here in this matter and has taken the time to be here tonight. And I guess at this point in time, if there's any questions or any comments, I'd love to, uh, you know, give somebody the floor. Uh, state your name. Yeah. Please state your name clearly for the record. Diane Jones, Auburn Township. Uh, in the list of um, directors and uh, um, elected officials whose pay was, was 
given. I did not see that of uh, county prosecutors. Why don't you start off? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Diane? We, I can answer a question because I did hear it. So we, did, we, we told you we did not put anybody within the legal or judicial part of this. Okay. As far as salaries and everything. Is there a reason for there. that? Not and if we, to be quite honest with you, we didn't have all of the data to be able to accurately reflect it on this policy. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. State your name, please. Your McNeil, Troy Township. How are board members appointed, and is there a possibility of unappointing? So to answer your question, the, how they're appointed is this, um, the state appoints uh, six, and the Geauga County Commissioners appoint eight. And basically what it is is, is the terms come up for a four-year term, and then we get notified that these, these positions are going to be coming available, and we start to advertise for them. And, you know, this is a volunteer position, so it's trying to find that special person that has service in their heart and has the, the, the want to do this, so it's not always the easiest thing. And we commend our board members that are volunteering their time to do this. To get to your other question about removing board members, uh, approximately two weeks ago, I believe it was two weeks ago, we removed two board members. Um, and the position was is, is that they have a certain number of, of meetings that they have unexcused absences that they miss that then we basically make notification to them to have them removed from the position. So as of, as of two weeks ago, we took action and notified two members of the board that we removed and we replaced. And in addition to that, we've got a couple of situations where we have had um, a board member can, can last, according to the bylaws, the, and also what is, is stated within the Ohio Vice Code, um, two terms or ten years and we have a scenario right now with the board member that is appointed from the state that we are looking into and we have made contact with the state um, state department to, to, to you know put some some kind of action in place because it is a violation that we're seeing that we want them to be able to hold our members accountable so that we can have you know full Full clarity on this board with with if if you should be their servant and you can be their servant then you are going to and if you can't or shouldn't we don't want you to and we want to follow the law yes sir sure yes come on up and so everybody here state your name and come on up here because it's not going to go too far um, Skip Claypool uh, Jogger County Cheslin. Um, recently appointed to the board, and I will make a comment um, to address um, what Mr. McNeil's comment was. Recently, a number of board members were appointed to the board. Um, as anybody that knows me know, knows that I do, I do my homework. I'm right now studying the Ohio Revised Code. I've talked to an attorney. I've looked at the contract. I've got serious issues with this board who, um, and, and it was primarily state appointed members who push this contract through and, and set up the arrangement. Um, there are serious liability issues to the board. There's an issue with this levy being impacted by the contract. Because of the size of the contract and the nature of the contract, the, the, um, the levy itself may in fact be at risk because there's some, gonna be some people who are not happy about this. Uh, in addition to that, this contract directly violates the bylaws in that we're supposed to give a job review on an annual basis according to the bylaws, according to the Ohio Revised Code, and this circumvents the Ohio Revised Code, so we can't give him, a, we can give Mr. Adams a performance appraisal, but it doesn't, it's not going to make any impact on the salary adjustments. And so if we have a, a director, and I wouldn't expect Mr. Adams would do this, but let's say that we had a director that was misbehaving and he had a contract, we have no corrective um, opportunity here. So there's a number of significant liabilities in this contract. I'm not sure what to do about it, but our board, I'm gonna suggest that our board have a serious conversation about this and the liabilities that we're gonna face as a result of this contract. And so I applaud 
uh, Mr. Spitler and the rest of the board for bringing this up because this, the public needs to know about this. There's some uh, significant serious issues with this contract and the way that this board has been operating and I hope that this uh, gets corrected and I hope that you as a board reach out to the state and talk to them about the implications of the people that they're appointing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. anybody else? You're going to probably need to come up here. Um, the cord just not long enough to reach there. We're being conservative and keeping them away from uh, the cordless microphones. Okay, I'm Alberta Chauncey and I am chairman of the board. I do have a couple uh, clarifications maybe to me. I know Mr. Claypool has just come on the board and you're raising question about the evaluations. There have been evaluations of Jim. It comes through the uh, Planning and Policies Committee, and they are done on an annual basis. Due to the fact that this contract was really extended into this year, he should have had the evaluation in August. However, Planning and Policies is following through, and they are in public record. So he has had his evaluations, and there are goals, and they have goals also. Jim has to follow through for the um, community plan as well as whatever goals for the community. We do have that. Um, it doesn't impact the salary. What? It said it doesn't impact the salary. The, the, the bylaws say you do a salary appraisal when you do the job performance with everybody. The contract doesn't give us, it ties our hands. We can't adjust the salary based on the review. But the con but according to the evaluations, if there is a positive evaluation and his goals are reached, then he is getting a salary increase. However, he has not had salary increases, I think, for like four years before this salary increase, or eight years if you go way back. So that was uh, put out. We do have that. Hey, all right, excuse me, Ms. Chomsky. Um, Tim Lennon, Commissioner. I was just wondering, could you tell me how the board came up with this dollar amount and this compensation? What formula based on what percentage increases? I think it went back, looking back at the commissioners, um, the percentage that you give, I do have a piece of paper. There is something that wor we work this out going back, so I would have to get it for you, but that's how we did that. And not, after, not based on after on the percentage, but if you average it out per year, it came something like maybe 3.75 or 4 percent, but we had, this was factored out. It was just not said, okay, this is what we're going to give him, but we do have a uh, fact sheet or how we did that. And I can provide that for you. So I, I, I heard 3.75 or 4 something percent. We've never given an over 3% raise in the last eight years that I have been here. Um, in addition to that, I don't, I, I would have to check the numbers, but I believe that there was some form of compensation that uh, did occur in 2014 from the base number, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, we rescinded when, when, when you guys put them at 153,000 and it went down from there. It wasn't that high, and it, it was the same 12, um, whatever the salary is now, is what it had been since 2012. Okay. So, so you know, we can, we can look into that, and I can get back with you with, with numbers out of our auditor's office of exactly what was paid for that. For those years, that's that's not a not a problem. And I'm not going to second guess you because I don't know the exact answer on that, so I'm not going to I'm not going to question that. Um, so I guess at the end of the day here, um, is there anybody else that would like to state anything or, sir? from 
Uh, my name is Dennis Shafford. I've been a born and raised around here. Uh, I have questions. Put, put a little bit closer to your mouth there. Yep. I have a few questions so that I understand this. The board is the one that, that extends the contract to this individual, to the director, correct? Correct. Okay, can this job be placed out there for bid? Um, not given the contract. I'm not saying giving him the contract. No, no, I'm saying now that the contract is in place, we've, we're stuck. So you've the, currently got a contract in place. Yes. Without saying. a contract, yes, we would have the latitude as a board to be able to make adjustments. Until with the contract. Until when? When does this contract expire? Five years. Five, five years. Five years. Five. So he it's is not really gain, five years because he is gainfully employed at those amounts. With the guarantee job at the end. Yes. For the next five years. And what's the compensation, if you don't mind? Compensation also includes the car and the insurance. The compensation is not just a dollar to dollar unpaid uh, compensation. The compensation is a complete package compensation. And that's the reason this is so egregious. Okay, so you have a signed contract that expires in five years from now. What can you do about it now? We're looking into it. We don't know. This, this will bring attorneys to bear. Okay. Now, obviously, whoever's in that position has to have some integrity because they're dealing with quite a bit of public money. Okay? There's, that's, that's obvious. But they're also basically dealing with the same charities or organizations year to year to year to year. It's not like there's a great big influx of people looking for money. Basically, it's the same thing. So this job kind of becomes commonplace. You have disparity between the employees and the top dog. A large disparity in income. Personally, I used to employ nine men. I am self-employed now. I don't think that this job is honestly worth any more than $89,000 a year. Okay, is there anybody else? Yes, sir. I just have a brief comment. Sure, state your name. Uh, I'm uh, Daniel Schwein. I live in South Russell. I've you're been board, on the board, board a long time, and I've heard what you're saying. Yeah. I'm worried about what appeared in the newspaper. I, I, either whoever wrote the articles, especially one of them from the Times Courier, greatly exaggerated what, what the commissioners said in an interview, or the interview was libelous. So and it, well, but I can't we can do that. we don't write the articles. The newspaper writes That's the right. articles, and so we don't have any control over but that you can message. Look at it so you see have what to you call the courier. Say. Well, I'm not going to. I just thought you know you. I hope you read what they said because I don't think you would want to be quoted that way, or both uh, two of you anyhow, uh, commissioners. That's all. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jim McNeil and Troy. Uh, we're going to hear from the director in his own defense tonight. Jim, if you'd like to come and talk, I have no issues with that either. It's up to you. So I'm Jim Adams. I've been at the board uh, as the director now for 31 years. Um, so the contract came up um, in, actually the board started working on it in January of last year. So it took about 18 months to complete. Um, after the new board members came on in August and September of last year, the board actually went back and recreated the process. It started from scratch. Planning and Policies met again to answer their questions so that all the board members that came on 
had a full understanding of what they were talking about, what they were discussing. Um, as far as uh, my request, um, I did request a five-year contract. After 30 years, um, I think my work stood on its own, and I think the the um, work that I've done in, in bringing the agencies together stood on its own. As far as the, I didn't know what to expect tonight, so I'm not ready for some of the things that were brought up. I wasn't invited to come tonight. And so in transparency, you know, what we I invited the commissioners to meet with us so that we could update these numbers. And I actually have the updated numbers for all of you for that, you know, as far as the 14, 2014, whatever. So anyway, so uh, what I'd like to say is uh, my request to the board, uh, actually I have the numbers, so hang on just a second. Alright, so remember, I'm on a contract that runs from August 1st to July 31st. So my ask for the first year was 2.9%, which was under what the commissioners gave per year of 3%. My ask for the second year was 1.74%. My ask for the third year was 1.16%. My ask for the fourth year was 1.16%. My ask for the fifth year was 1.16%. The average raise for the commissioners over the last five years is 2.85%. So every year of my contract, I ask for less and less funding over the term of the contract. As far as the car goes, you're absolutely right. The car was added to the contract because many departments have their own cars. And, and so if I work for JFS, if I work for uh, engineers, if I work for the health department, I can drive a car to and from work, I can drive a car to and from home depending on what my role is. I pay taxes on all the personal uh, miles that I drive. I have to account for that and the reality is I drive about 24,000 miles a year in office uh, travel because we are required to show up at departments uh, meetings and for some of the grants that we wrote. We just completed grants with our agencies, and I submitted grants to the state for uh, state opioid response funds for this year, and this year we will receive over $1.2 million in new funds to, to provide treatment and prevention services for opioid response. That's one of the things that the board does. We coordinate those services, we submit those requests to the state, and then we administer those services. Today, as of today, we have 7,200 people in Geauga County that are receiving mental health or drug and alcohol treatment programs. Those are the people and the services that we have to administer. We have electronic health records, we have electronic billing records, all that is part of what the board does. And just for a summary, I would just like to read the last paragraph of the board meeting where the board approved my contract. Mr. Nivola said the board can vote accordingly. Dr. Lessig seconded the motion. Roll call. Vote ayes 8, days 1, abstentions 2. Motion approved. Thanks for letting me talk tonight. Jim, can you repeat that attendance again? Who was in attendance there? I don't have the full attendance. Yeah, either. I think the, the board appointees from the commissioner's office that was not represented fully because we had not appointed. 100% of our board appointments, right? Correct. Can I address that? That's yeah. a great point. Yeah. Okay, so, great point. Yeah. Here so that everybody can hear you. So, so there were two appointments that were not, had not been made yet by the right. right. Okay. So just a note on that, because I did make a note about that. Okay, here we go. So you're absolutely right. There were two members that weren't there. Uh, that and we that had, were not appointed. We had some transition. There was one right? member that was, uh, no wasn't there. Yeah. It was appointed, but wasn't there. And so, uh, so. I would like to add to that. Yeah. We do have, uh, you quoted from the minutes. Can I, I would like to give who the board members that were there that were present. Yeah, that's kind of what I was asking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, board members present was Ann Bagley. Ann Bagley. Fall excitement has begun at Geauga Park District with something for everyone in 25 parks close to home. Trails, ponds, programs, facilities, and so much more to bring color to your day. Plan your next family adventure now at geaugaparkdistrict.org. Hello, Witch. 
Michael Petruzzi, Mike Petruzzi, Dan Schweig, Dan Schweig, and Leela Bidmar. And Leela Bidmar. All right. And Out of all those names that I just read, two of them, well, Steve was his first meeting. Right. Yeah. Jimmy Lee Holden, I think, maybe his second meeting. No, no, he was there for a while. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry, here. But out of those names, I only read three that were commissioners appointees. Okay, the commissioners appointees Four. are Jimmy Lee. Oh, yeah, I didn't Tom. Five. Tom, Nicole, uh, Mike, and, she's and one Steve. Just removed for yeah, but they were removed after this board meeting. Okay. So they were there. All right, so I, I know the issue of having or having the county commissioners appointments have come up, but, it, and the term was, as Dan said, the term in the paper was like sliding something under the door. But let me point out that if the board really wanted to do that, as of, there were three commissioner openings as of February 2018 last year through August 2018 of last year. And the board had already decided, remember, the board had started meeting and deciding on the contract in January, waited until the board, the new board members came on in August, September of last year, and then reworked the program, so reworked the contract so that they could be in, participate in that process. And they were on every subcommittee. Yeah, and that's fair enough. And I think I think something to the, my, my point of the, the way I, perceived it and I wasn't in these board meetings but the, my perception of something of this magnitude being discussed and voted on I would have said and we do it every week put it on an agenda so it's out there for my board to completely understand that we're going to be talking about this this week and you might want to be intended in attendance because it's going to be a big one but there was no agenda item there was no announcement I don't know if there was an email sent out to the board saying hey you might want to be at this meeting because this is a pretty important board meeting. Tim, and, and, and yeah. one of the things that happened, I think I talked about this at the last meeting was- And it came in under old business. The sheer right. number of meetings that the board had and the last board meeting before that, the board assigned a subcommittee to meet with the prosecutor as the last step in that process. They had met, the board meeting came up, so it was a natural progression for the board. Yeah, um, natural. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I would have done a better job communicating that. With well, the even the commissioners don't have things on the agenda, including appointing our board members. Sure, we do. Not every time. We do it all the time. I mean, no, we do it. We're not done on the agenda. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, but of something of this magnitude, your five year deal on something that this county has never ventured in anywhere close to seeing a deal like this. Can I make? I would have made the announcement. Can I also make a comment about that? There was a process. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can. It's Alberta Choksi again. Yep, yep. Okay. We did do that. We cannot put something on that agenda if we don't know it's going to come up. I can use one example. I believe it was in a May or June meeting. There was a discussion about the contract again, and one of your appointees brought it up. Uh, as a resolution, which we did not know would come up, that should we have a contract or no contract? So that was brought up at the meeting. We did not I, know. That's fine. I'm not saying that. And that but that's comes up, That comes up. And I know you can't make an announcement for a comment like that, but for the consideration of an item by line item that you went through a contract item by item, and there was no mention that this was going to be happening in that board meeting to me feels a little dishonest. But can I say something? You had all of your members there except no. one person who did not come to the meeting. Yep. Okay? I, so they're not you know when you say my members it's I mean those commissioners the commissioners, right. commissioners, yeah. the commissioners yeah. appointees. Right. Right. So everyone was there. We had one person I believe we had eleven members at that time because you still had three members that were not appointed. However they all came except one. So they were involved in that, whether it was okay. publicized or not, but they were there at the meeting. I want to make sure I understood mm -hmm. what you said, but when you, when you, when the contract was initially proposed, if I heard you correctly, your ask for raises were only around 2%? So how how did it go from that small amount to so the one that three different options during the course of the whole time? Yeah. So now I'm ticked, 
and I'm extremely frustrated with what's going on. This is Tom Novolis, I live in East Clarendon, and I'm a board member. And you know what? My turn. Please. Thank you. We didn't know about those numbers. Where that handle yeah, was in correct. a sub that was in a committee where that set, and then a process was done internal to that committee, policies and procedures. Right. That then came out in the contract, and we didn't know about those original numbers. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't know. Michael didn't know. Jimmy Lee didn't know. We didn't know about those original numbers. And we were told because Mr. Adams did not get these raises for all these different years that he deserved them. Correct. And he deserved a five-year contract because he is a college student and he needs stability in his family. I know people that are losing their job all the time. I know eight people in a major healthcare industry that lost their job in a single day and they had kids in college. I'm frustrated with this board. Absolutely. I feel deceived on some of those numbers and the way that process worked. We fought for a year and a half trying to keep this and no contract because I believe no bureaucrat to everything that you guys put out and what you said, no bureaucrat should have a contract, period. Ever. I've been steaming on this for a long period. I like the people on the board. I think everybody, as well said, has been trying to do a good job. Right. But when it comes to fiscal responsibility, there is not here. it's all about Mr. Adams and making sure he gets everything. You know where we really saved this county? It was on intellectual property. Yeah. That was in the contract as well. Go read the minutes. And we had to fight to get that out of there. Steve looked at that as a new member and went, what in the world is that about? Why would you give away our intellectual property? Anyway, I don't want to get down the whole road on this, but I'll tell you what, after hearing those original numbers, I would have been fine with those, but I'm never fine with a contract, especially five years, and we fought to try and get that reduced. Michael? Uh, yeah. John, do me a favor and explain the, the way the game was played because it was a vote to approve they have a contract okay, so, and then what you voted on. So Alberta what was voted, correct. What you voted no, on wait. was the, 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 the change to make the changes in the contract. So Alberta was correct. Jeff took and proposed a no contract because there was a number of us that did not want a contract. And it came up and we lost that vote. And that's fair. But then the next point is all right, those things in the contract were egregious. Egregious, everything that you pointed out, financially, intellectual property, and so many other things. They were absolutely egregious. As a business guy who's written a number of contracts, who's negotiated all sorts of stuff, I looked at that and said, this is ridiculous from a business position. I, I would never give it something like that. So the process went, number one, there was a vote, to either have a contract or not have a contract. It was voted to have a contract. The elements in the contract were egregious. So then we were able, over time and argument and discussion, as I said, executive sessions got quite interesting. And it got to that point where it was, let's go through line item by line item and see what we could take and change. So that last vote, which was done well. I think the process worked exceptionally well with a subcommittee and exceptionally well as bringing it to the board, regardless of where it sat on the agenda. It was there and members had that opportunity if they would have shown up, right. you know, they could have participated. And we went through a fair process of going through those line items and being able to extract those that we could get a vote on and the other ones that we couldn't or we, met in the middle somewhere as to what you were saying about the, the sick leave. You know, it was brought up. Read the minutes of the meeting. It's all there. So at the end of the day on that one, it was very simple that what the vote was, was to approve the changes for that contract. And with that, 
So Mike will take yeah, that. So my, my only question here is, is some just some simple math. So going into this contract, because I'm not following this too too closely, and I'm not sure where we made where the error is, but I know that they was stated like 1.6 percent or I didn't 1.9 or whatever, but. So we had a base of approximately, for conversational purposes, 111,000. Well, first year would be at, at, at 2%. Let's calculate it 2% for just sake of conversation, just using round numbers. You'd be in 113 the first year, 115, 484 the second year, 117 the third year, 120 the fourth year, and 122,550 the fifth year. But if you look at the contract, that contract is 139,000. So I'm not quite sure where the 1.16 went, unless my math is different. Today's today's math might be different to what it's, it's being calculated. But if you look at those numbers. I think what Jim was saying is that that's what he requested. He requested. The board, board decided graciously to pay more. I see, okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Is that how it went then? He asked for that, you guys, so yeah, you guys no, figured more. give them the bank. No. Yeah. 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 The board. Okay. The board is the board is fiscally irresponsible. Could you state your name, please? Yeah. Mike Petrozello. This board has not provided me with any metrics on how we are performing. I've been asking for that forever. What is the metrics? What are we doing? Is, is are we getting better or are we getting worse? Oh. The number I get is well, the more people we have in it, the better we're doing. That isn't our goal, the mental health board's goal. The mental health board ought to be make people acceptable, better, and back, bring them back into society. We have no metrics set up at all. If there are metrics, I can't get them. To talk about this levy, the reason why there hasn't been a levy in 17 years is there's more grant money available. How much more grant money? I've asked for that information. How much more grant money are we getting from the federal government, from the state government, and from other agencies? There's, there's no transparency. I mean, how many, where does money's coming from? No transparency. I mean, I, I get frustrated sitting on that board because there's no, I mean, the board has failed the taxpayers in Java County in my mind by not being responsible enough to have a succession plan for Jim Adams. He, he retired. There should have been one put in place when he retired that he hired him. None was put in. And the board has just failed. Then they give him a raise. And this raise, by the way, those numbers that Jim Abbs said were never in any of the contracts I received. They were always, I offered, made a resolution, a motion to go with the county's uh, raises for Jim Abbs because we were going to lose on the thing anyway, on the contract anyway. And that was voted down, which was with two and a half to three percent, whatever the county was. And that was voted down. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. The board, the board is not fiscally responsible to the taxpayers of Java County, period. Thank you. One other thing. So the, the, excuse, the excuse for having a contract anyway is because everybody gets into a tit for tat every time it comes to a review and a salary increase. So from a personal point, and this is my own personal point, every time I saw contracts like that in the business world, I threw them out the door because that's a lazy man's way of doing things. That's no different than a continuous levy. That's a lazy person's way of doing stuff when you do continuous levies or you give contracts to a bureaucrat for an extended period of time because you're not willing to argue whether they're worth something or not. That's just my opinion. Can I ask you a question? You're, you're a board member? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm a businessman, I sign contracts all the time. Okay. Um, I've heard two of you say that you did not have all the information that you needed to complete this contract. Is, is that correct? Is that what you're saying? The contract, you the contract came out of a process where it was put together in policies and procedures. Okay, but the question is, did all eight members agreed to this contract with 
all of the information pertaining to the case. Not that piece. I did. I never saw that piece. Then, then somebody just needs to look at the legality of the contract because if if every member of the board, regardless of who they were, did not have all the pertinent information concerning it. Then it's a legal matter, and and a judge needs to determine if that contract was issued properly. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wanted to see one no. thing? I am Linda Miller. I live in Russell Township, and I serve on the board. I have served on that board for more than six years. And I have to say that we provide service for our mentally ill and our addicted residents of Geauga County. That is our mission. And I feel quite distressed that in the midst of all of this commotion, we have lost sight of the fact that we are helping people. Thank you. To respond to you, that is our concern because in order to help people, we need to have dollars. And those dollars that the levy is paying for and that the taxpayers in this county are paying for should be going to services. And when we have these extraordinary salaries, what's cool, there's only so much money in, in, in the kitty to be able to, to be spent on services. When you've got a situation like this, and I think it was pretty clear looking at those examples, how is it that Lake County, all, more than double the amount of people, has, has that kind of number for their director? How is it that Portage, that Trumbull, at the end of the day, what, what information did you guys use to be able to make a good determination to keep the people that need that money for the services in this county, make sure that they're getting those services? Our process began by looking at the numbers for all 88 counties and looking at counties that were comparable in size, population, and um, I think neediness, uh, so that it was very comfortable situations. Name, Could you please state I'm, your name? I'm Dr. Board. Carolyn Lessig. I'm a, a member of the board, state appointed. And we began at that point, relative, and also at the point where we began, Jim was at the bottom of the salary grouping for, in the, in the bottom fourth or below uh, for all the, all the counties in the state of Ohio. And we began at that point, plus the eight years that there hadn't been any increases for him. So that was the point that we began. We didn't stick with Northeast Ohio. And if you looked at it in detail, in terms of those various counties, apart from Cuyahoga, which has services that are very intense, a lot of those don't do the job that we do with the populations that they have. Not that their need is any less, but we do a very intense job with our population. We do provide hospitalization substitutes so that we don't have to use the state system. We provide many of our own services here so that we don't have to use the state resources. But in terms of starting this whole salary process, we began with the state numbers as a whole. Okay, so if I can just just get, make a comment to what you said, and I appreciate it. If that's what you did, great. However, the reason that we, when we do our salary studies, we do it based off of what is our area paying? Because what that does is, that gives us the snapshot of what the competitive salaries are for employees. That gives us the competitive cost of what the housing is in our area. You can, you can go down to Warren County and have a very comparable, or Delaware County, which is almost identical in population to what Geauga County is, but you go out there and it's heavy agriculture. So the, the numbers are gonna be skewed. What we basically try to compare ourselves to in all of the salary studies that we do, is we basically take a position of taking average households, average salaries, average employees, average travel distance, all of those things put together to be able to come up with a sensible number because the old saying, statistics don't lie, statisticians do.
This is true right here. When you look at these, this is what we've got for our area. So when we look at competition, who do we lose competition to? When we're, when we're losing employees from our water resources, when we're losing people from our jobs and family service, where are they going? 99 times out of 100, they're going to one of these counties. Because this is our this is our competitive circle, and this is our competitive circle of what we have of, of, of comparisons. So, yes, sir. Well, you know, I really appreciate the process that's going on in here. I especially like what Mr. Mueller said because he got very angry. He started off very angry. And, he, and, and in, in the meeting, he did exactly the same thing. He finally came around to the idea that some of that agreement, or contract, whatever you want to call it, was okay. However, we spent two hours in that meeting in open session. It was not an executive session. Right. It's all in the minutes. Pulling that apart and literally pulling the contract apart. Now, maybe we didn't end up, I should say we, Maybe the board didn't end up with exactly what it wanted, nor did um, the county appointees all end up with what, in fact, two of them abstained, uh, one of them voted against, and one wasn't present and is no longer on the board, I think. I think he was removed for non-attendance. I especially appreciated what Mr. Claypool said in, the first, in his first meeting, he backed off and said he was going to abstain because he hadn't been there, which is a reasonable thing. But he also said no one is allowed to abstain if there's a simple yes or no and they don't have a good reason. So he was actually pointing to two of the county, previous county appointees who had abstained, okay? Although I don't think that was meant to be ne terribly negative. But those two votes probably would have been no. However, once after, finally we came to one sentence in that agreement that I believe Mr. Neolis approved of, which was that this contract, or again, the agreement can be looked at at any time for any reason, and it can be rescinded at any time for any reason. No, uh, that's legalistic language. I, 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 I know, what, I, I read the contract, and if, I, if you go to the, I wish we had a copy of it here today to show you, yeah. but the termination clause, the way I read it in the contract, says differently, says differently. Well, I thought that that's what it meant, anyway, I thought that's what it said. But I think what it came into, and it's in, that's why it said refer to the minutes, because your yeah. recollection from the discussion point, what's in the language, is different, but the agreement among the board members was that that was open for review based on that. At any so time, I, 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 any at any time, time, anywhere. That, those are okay, in the okay, minutes. So that should actually be there. Now, yes. again, Mr. Claypool, when he, when he showed up the first day, he obviously was central to, the, to what I would call a caucus. It was pretty good. Now, my attitude towards this is very interesting because I was the head of the Planning and Policies Committee and we simply submitted our recommendation based on a lot of things. Eight years or so of concern. We had a previous um, chairman who was the head of, uh, not, not the head, he was a prestigious um, attorney in a prestigious law firm. He still is a different law firm. Uh, who actually developed the contract idea for us and said, look, we've been wasting so much time year after year, let's do a contract. All right, so we continued with that. The contents of the contract were different and, and even what was suggested back in 2014 was different. Uh, it got misquoted in the newspaper a little bit similar to what happened here, somewhat misquoted, but except but it wasn't the, the, the content of it so much as the idea of it. Now, my attitude is this. The committee submitted 
its recommendation. The board tore it apart, I have to tell you. And they and they they kept some of it, they changed the wording of some of it, they removed some of it, like the intellectual property concept. And I gotta say, Mr. Neulis was responsible for that. Uh, and and I appreciate that he he gave us both sides of the of the argument tonight. First the angry part, then he came around a little bit. Now, my attitude is this, the committee submitted it, it's not gonna look at it again. The board as a whole can look at it and it's a matter of votes. If, if whoever wants, and, and it, isn't, it doesn't break down just by uh, county and, and, and state appointees. I don't think that's where it is. It's what would, the people who'd been there a long time realized the stuff that uh, we had gone through. The new people have good ideas. Obviously, you've got, a, the county has perhaps more appointees than the state. And it'll turn out that uh, this contract will probably be redeveloped. But it's gonna be based on resolutions. It's not gonna be based on going back to committee and fooling around with it. It's gonna be based on rev resolutions by the board and preferably in open session. Because that was actually uh, uh, Ms. Choksi. So, so Ms. Choksi. if I can say this, what you're saying is all we're asking. All right. Is, is yeah. all we're asking is that we are asking you guys to look at this. Please. Well, they, that's, they, that's what it comes down to. In order to look at it, somebody has to make a resolution, somebody on the board, to Ms. Choksi. And she is the chair, and she has to accept that there's a resolution. And if they vote to look at this again, it'll be looked at. Because nobody wants to break procedure. Nobody's trying to get away with anything. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Okay, Truly. well, that's the point. Now, what the outcome will be will depend upon what happens. And I think now that the composition of board's a little different, it probably will be a little different outcome. But I can't guarantee you what they're gonna do. And I think at this point, the problem is they've gone round and round and round with this year after year after year. Already he doesn't have a contract. It hasn't really been accept accepted. Uh, well, it's accepted, but he hasn't started it yet. Um, it can be it can be looked at at any time for any reason. Okay, Chair, just just to be clear on the uh, the termination clause of the contract actually reads: This employment agreement may be terminated by mutual agreements of the party, retirement, permanent disability, and death of the chief executive officer, conviction of a felony offense by the employee, or termination by the board in accordance with provision chapter with the provisions of chapter 304.032 of the higher revised code or insufficient funding to cover the compensation. And one of the things that's interesting is, I'm not sure exactly what, who wrote that up, but that, that chapter that's referenced is establishment of community-based continuum of care. It has nothing to do with employment. Well, that, that's something that we we're going to start to wrap up. We got just a couple more comments here, and then we're going to be done. Is this commissioner a retire rehire situation? Is he drawing attention at this moment as well? Yes. I believe yes. And your initial numbers, your baseline is skewed by that amount. This man's not hurting. Is anybody else? Susan Daniel, Chardon Township. Has the board considered that this levy will have a better chance of passing if they rescind this contract? We don't know. This this is this, this whole meeting tonight is not about the levy. This is about the contract. Uh, Mike, I just saw the, the the committee that put the contract together. I wasn't there, but but I can tell you that I don't believe that there were any commissioners appointees on that committee. You're wrong. Who was? Who was? Your daughter. My daughter was on a committee? Yep. So you had one person? Two. Jeff we Klein. had Jeff Klein. Go ahead, Chief. Okay. Well, but those numbers that Jim mentioned earlier were never discussed. I never heard those numbers before. Okay. So I guess in close, um, do any of the other commissioners have anything else? 